So welcome back everybody to a brand new video here on the second channel and today we're going to be looking at some early Shine Pow EX decks from Japan. Now Shine Pow EX is going to be the brand new water type EX Pokemon that honestly has a lot of potential in the new format. Of course this card combined with the brand new Bax Calibur is going to make for a really strong new water archetype and obviously there's other really good water types in the format already that will be good with Shine Pow and Bax Calibur. And we're going to take a look at all the lists in Japan, see what people are playing, see what they're running, see what techs they're using, because there's a lot of water Pokemon to talk about. Um, before we dig in the video, of course, if you have not yet subscribed to the second channel yet, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. And uh, make sure to leave a like on the video if you go on to enjoy the video here on the second channel. I think next episode, looking at the early list from Japan, we're going to look at, uh, I think, Tinglu next. Uh, Tinglu is actually looking pretty promising, and it might actually give Fighting Pokemon another new home. As Fighting Pokemon have been kind of on the down low right now, but I think that Tinglu is going to revive them a little bit. So I'm excited to maybe look at Tinglu, but we're getting into Shine Pow. Now I'm going to quickly run down what these cards do. So the two main takeaways when uh, looking into Shine Pow are Shine Pow and then Bax Calibur. So Shine Pow here. It's got the ability. Once you're in turn, this Pokemon is in the active spot, you may search your deck for two basic water energies and put them in your hand. So its ability is quite literally Capacious Bucket. If you remember what Capacious Bucket did, it allowed you to get two basic water out of your deck. So right off the bat, it has a fantastic ability. Being able to get basic water energy for free is actually kind of insane, to be honest. It's one of the things that actually gives this Pokemon a very strong ability. Um, I think you can chain it too, so you can switch between Shine Pows and get like four energy out of nowhere. It's a pretty good ability. Again, Capacious Bucket was one of the best cards in Water Decks, and uh, without Capacious Bucket anymore, it's a bit slower, but thanks to Shine Pow's ability, you don't need to worry about that. And then it has the attack Hail Blade that does 60 damage, and then you discard any amount of water energy from your Pokemon, doing 60 damage for each one, so it does 60 times for each water energy you discard from play. It's basically the exact same attack of as Raichu V. So it's a Water Raichu with a very strong ability. Now, the thing that makes this card good is when you pair it with Bax Calibur. Bax Calibur is a brand new Stage 2 Pokemon with the ability Ultra Cold. As often as you like, during your turn, you may attach a basic Water Energy card from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Yes, that does say as often as you like, meaning that you can attach unlimited amount of Water Energy from your hand in a single turn. This ability is fantastic. Water Pokemon did lose Frost Moth, which had the same ability only working on the bench instead of anywhere you like, where Bax Calibur does work on the active. And again, when you're able to use Shine Pow's ability to get water energy out of your deck, you can, you know, play cards like Research or Barrel or whatever draw card you want to play in your deck to dig for more energy. You can power up a Shine Pow and then just Hail Blade for a ton of damage, one to KO something, and then use Superior Energy Retrieval, which is getting reprinted, and then get four energy back and rinse and repeat. So let's take a look at some early lists here with Shine Pow. First list wanted to look at, and I will leave a link down below to the website once again if you want to go look at these lists yourself. We can start things off here with this build here. Now, this build is using Bass Calibre. I'm going to see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see it's a little better. But yeah, we got this build using, of course, the Bax Calibre and the Shine Pow. The big thing is, are the two other attackers within the deck? So we do see the deck does play a 2 2 Alolan Vulpix V Star. Vulpix is really good in the format against Gardevoir. Now, Gardevoir may actually be able to beat Vulpix in the new format because of Drifloon, um, especially with Champions Festival. There's a lot of talk about Drifloon, so definitely uh, keep your eye out on that. But Vulpix V Star, of course, does have the attack where it can be damaged by Pokemon with ability, so it's a pretty good kind of wall target to use with uh, Shine Pound. I kind of like it. Um, there's other matchups that you can use Vulpix in, not just Gardevoir, but it is very good against Gardevoir. If you're playing against a Gardevoir deck, it doesn't really have many ways to beat Vulpix, you're chilling. And then we do have this Kyogre from Crown Zenith. Now, what it does, it has an attack that for four energy, um, you put, I think, three water energy from Kyogre back into your hand, and then you can snipe something for 180 damage. Now, that's a really strong effect. Being able to snipe for 180 is really good. Of course, if your opponent does not have a Manaphy in play, you can really punish them. Some other stuff in the deck, we got Radiant Greninja, another fantastic partner with, Shine, uh, with uh, Shine Pow and with Bax Calibur. Greninja not only works with Bax Calibur, but it also allows you to have a bit of a draw engine in the deck, so it lets you draw some cards, and it also can attack. Actually, Greninja is one of the reasons why Bax Calibur is looking pretty scary, because you're able to use it as a snipe option, and having that snipe option is pretty deadly. Um, the deck also plays Luminion, which is a fantastic card in the deck, too. And not only does it have a good ability, but it also works with... Um, Bax Calibur. You, you can build up Luminion with you can build up Luminion with Bax Calibur. And then there's a Squawk ability. Now Squawk ability is kind of weird. It's basically Dedenne GX on the first turn of the game. So when you play it from your hand on your bench, you can discard your hand and draw six cards. So it's Dedenne GX ability on the on your first turn, essentially. I think so. It's a pretty interesting card. And uh, some of the lists I have seen do play it. 
Now this list is a little bit weirder. There is Spirit Mask in the deck that I think if the tool this card is attached to and the defending Pokemon has 40 HP or less, it can't damage you. So I think the idea is you try to like hit them with uh, Shine Pound and it can't damage you. I'm not sold on the idea of Spirit Mask in this deck. I don't know how good it is. Um, oh, you know what? Oh, never mind. Spirit Mask is how you counter Gardevoir. Yep. That just clicked. You know how earlier I just said Drifloon counters, you know, the Vulpix, like the Gardevoir with playing Drifloon? Well, Spirit Mask actually counters the Drifloon. Oh, that is really smart. You can actually use Spirit Mask with Vulpix to actually counter Drifloon. Ah, interesting. I mean, they can still attack you, though, I think. They'll still attack you, but they might not do that much damage. Okay, that I guess that makes sense then. And, and if you don't knock something out, then I guess that Pokemon is just not going to touch you. That is pretty smart, actually. That, I guess, is how you counter Drifloon. Um, another really good card in Bax Caliber, for the record, is Irida. Irida allows you to grab a rare candy and a Bax Caliber. So quite literally, if you just have Irida, you guarantee rare candy Bax Caliber, which is a fantastic, fantastic supporter card to play in the deck. I'm pretty sure every single Shine Pow EX deck we're going to see is going to be playing at least four Averys. We got another build here using the Vulpix V-Star. Again, very, very strong card in the deck, the 1-1 one, one Vulpix, the Luminion. This one does play Babarel, and I do like having Babarel in the in the deck. I don't know about Squovit, but Babarel makes sense because when you, it synergizes really well with um, Superior Energy Retrieval, which, again, you discard two cards from your hand, you get four basic energy from your discard back into your hand. So Superior Energy Retrieval is very good with Shine Pow and Bax Calibur, but also pretty good with Bibarel because you thin your hand down, attach the energy, and then your hand's super thin for Injustice and Sizers. If I was going to play Bax Calibur, I would love to have a 1-1 one, one, or even a 2-2 two, two Bibarel engine in the deck if there's room. This build here, again, playing the Iono, the Research, the Arvin, the Raihan, 2 boss, um, the Fort Irida. A really good tool card in the deck is the new Cape of Toughness reprint, the tool that gives your basic Pokemon plus 50 HP. Very good card with Shine Power. Shine Power's only got 220 HP, so it's actually very squishy. It's like Maraidon again, right? It's basically like Maraidon, where it's a very easy to one-shot EX that can one-shot you pretty easily. So I do like the ability to play Cape in this deck. We'll call it Cape for now. I don't, I forget what the card's called, but you just put the thing on it, and then Shine Power already has, then it has 270 HP, and it becomes a lot more tankier and harder to one-shot. It's built here. Again, very straightforward build, actually in uh, using the double Bibarel package, which again, I do like, and playing that one of Crown Zenith Kyogre that allows you to snipe for 180, um, but you have to put the water energy back in your hand, which again, you don't mind when you have a Bax Calibur, and then this build also plays a very heavy count of the K plane, three of them, which does work with Kyogre, Luminion, Greninja, and Shine Pao, and the build also is not playing any Iono, but this build does play Penny, which can heal you. Um, another list here. Now, this one is very interesting. This is kind of the, uh, the path some Shine Power decks can take, and that is actually going to be playing it with Palkia uh, V-Star. Now, Palkia V-Star does have a very strong attack with uh, Subspace Well. It's a water Pokemon, and it has a very good V-Star power where you can put three water energy from your discard pile onto one of, uh, your water Pokemon any way you like. So you can actually use its V-Star power to get plus three water energy for your Shine Power, and that is actually insane. Um, yes, you do have, you know, Bax Caliber and Superior Energy Retrieval, but say you're, you're in a scenario where you, you need, like, six energy to win. You can Superior Energy Retrieval for those energies, you need a couple more energies. Well, you can just use Palkia to get two energy from the discard back into play, say you have six in there, right? And then all of a sudden, you got six energy in play out of nowhere next to Palkia, and then you just blow them up. Also, Palkia lets you, like, do, like, a Greninja play without needing the Bax Calibur right away, and it also lets you build up a Shine Pow if you ever need that kind of quick access. I do really like the idea of Palkia with Shine Pow. It does give you another bulky attacker. I mean, again, it's a 280 HP attacker that is very scary to play against because, you know, if you're filling your bench up, it's hitting hard. Palkia, a lot of the time, is either one hit KOing or two hit KOing most Pokemon, so it's a very, very strong attacker within the Shine Pow deck. And uh, obviously, list we saw before, we're using the Kyogre. Some weren't playing Kyogre, some played Vulpix. But the Palkia definitely seems like a good package to play within the deck. It's a really good backup attacker. You can just go, you know, attach, attach, attack with it. So it's not like Palkia even needs the Bax Calibur. And this kind of gives you time to work towards Bax Calibur. Instead of trying to get a super fast Bax Calibur, you can kind of chill behind Palkia for a little bit. That's kind of the idea. And then we got another Palkia build here. This one does play the Articuno that paralyzes the opponent. This is another really smart card to play with Bax Calibur. Like I said, there's a lot of water Pokemon in the meta. We've only seen, we've seen what? Four techs now, Articuno, Palkia, Kyogre, and Vulpix. And Articuno does have that Paralyze attack, and uh, Switch is not very popular. I mean, even just look at this Shine Pal. It only plays one Escape Rope. So the popularity of Switching cards has decreased a little bit, and this makes Articuno a lot stronger. There's a lot of decks that quite literally play zero Switching outs, or one out, and it's like, I'm going to Paralyze you, and if you don't find that Switch out, it's not good. So 
Articuno, I think, is a very good card to play in Shine Power. It's another really smart tech card that could be kind of like a staple in the deck going forward, um, depending on, you know, if people tech for it or not. But I think it's a really good card to play in the Chime Pow deck. It also only works for two energy, so you don't really need to commit much to even attack with it, which is nice. And uh, Paralyzing the Opponent is very good. Again, if the opponent doesn't answer Paralysis, this gives you time to maybe build up for the Bax Caliber. We got another build here. This one combines Palkia and Gar our Vulpix, but also just playing a 1-1 one -one Palkia and a 1-1 one -one Vulpix. So a little bit more of a greedier build, playing the 1-1s one of each, but still utilizing both of the strong V-Stars. Um, this build does play stuff like Pokeyear, Canceling Cologne. We do see the Vacuum, Temple of Sinnoh as the Stadium. A lot of the lists were playing Skater Park. I guess I should have mentioned that. You even see the build above here playing the Skater Park. I think what it does, if you retreat the Pokemon with energy on it, um, the energy goes back in your hand. So I think the idea is you can use Shine Pow's ability, get two energy out of your deck, attach them with Baxcalibur, retreat, get the energy that you retreated back into your hand with Skater Park, and then reattach it to another Shine Pow, get even two more energy. That's, I think, the idea behind the Skater Park. Um, which is a really smart idea. It lets you technically chain together energy every turn when you can just loop Chine Pow with the Skater Park Bax Caliber combo, which is really smart. But this build, optimizing the Temple of Sinnoh instead, to try to be a little bit more disruptive. We do see the one of Judge and the Iono in the deck with those hand disruptions. This build does play Cross Switcher 2, trying to be very heavy on the Gust, which is really clever. We got another Palkia build here using the one of Kyogre this time and Bibarel. So really trying to make the most out of its options. I, I kind of like this build a lot. Again, we got the Bibarel, so we have that built-in draw engine. And we have the Kyogre. The thing with Bibarel is it's also like Iono proof. Iono's obviously going to be a staple in every deck. At least every deck is going to play at the very minimum one Iono. But most top decks will play at least three to four Iono. And in the late game, when you're kind of taking prizes and you go down to like two prizes remaining, or even three, your opponent Ionos you into like three bad cards. At least you have Bibarel, and that's why the Bibarel engine is so good in this deck, in my opinion. Uh, but this build does play the Kyogre and the Bibarel and the Palkia. I like this build quite a bit. It's got it's a it's got everything I like about it. It's got the Bibarel, it's got a Palkia, it's got the the tool card, two of them. So not just one, it's got two. Um, and I kind of like this build a lot. I like this build a lot. My plushie just fell low. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. We got another uh, build here, not using Palkia, using the Vulpix V-Star. Um, playing Path is kind of clever. You can use Path in, you know, Shine Pound. This one did get top four, actually, too. So this one actually did pretty well. I guess Path can help a little bit against Gardevoir, too, which is nice. Actually, no, I can't. You can't use Path against Gardevoir. Well, I guess you can. You just can't use Vulpix and Path at the same time because Vulpix's attack doesn't work if Path isn't played. The opponent would be able to attack you if they said had an ability. Uh, this build here, very straightforward, just utilizing Shine Pow, but also trying to take advantage of Mew. So using Mew to find rare candy really quickly um, lets you kind of get faster Shine Pows in play, not just having to rely on the Bax, uh, the Irida to get Bax Calibre. You can use the Mew to help get the Shine Pow Bax Calibre engine rolling. This build is interesting, though. It actually plays two boss, four Irida, two Zinnia's Resolve, and two Roxanne, not even playing Research Iono. Very interesting take on this deck. Um, Zinnia does let you draw a lot of cards. Potentially, if your opponent, you know, plays into Zinnia, you are drawing six cards, and that is a lot of cards to see in a turn, especially when you're trying to dig for stuff like energy. This deck's got Beach Court in it. Uh, Beach Court's really good with Mew. A very heavy switch count, which I guess is decent. Um, very, like, straightforward, consistent build using four Nest Ball, four Battle VIP. Um, yeah, very straightforward. Not even playing Ultra Ball because you have the ear does. So that's, that's interesting. Um, we got another Palkia build here. Um, nothing too crazy. We do see the Kyogre coming back into the fray another uh, palkia build and this one plays rever room another really interesting card you can play with iona is rever room rever room lets you discard an, uh, an, a basic energy from your hand uh, or an energy from your hand sort of drop to six cards so a very good draw engine when you're playing you know 11 energy on top of the energy retrieval outs you do have a lot of energy to work with in a game which does allow your rever room to draw you quite a bit of cards and it's a decent draw engine it's sometimes better than v Burl because you're drawing more cards than bibarel is but at the same time you're having to discard an energy, and it isn't as good against Iono. So if your opponent Iono's into a you know small hand, you have to draw an energy. And I feel like at that point, you've already exhausted a lot of your energy. So I'm not sold on Rever Room. Definitely don't hate it, though. We got another Palkia build here. Uh, once again, using the Kyogre. This one has three Gift Energy, which is very fascinating. So Gift Energy, great answer to Iono, and also just lets you draw more cards going into your turn, which, again, will in theory let you see more out to pulling off an attack with Shine Pow. It's very interesting. The gift energy is awesome. Because, again, when you back Caliber, you're not attaching energy from your hand. For turns, you can still attach a gift energy and do back Caliber. Another build here using the Palkia and the Kyogre. Um, we got another build here. Just relying solely on the Palkia. Getting top four. Getting second place, actually, it says here. Even got this deck got, this deck got second place, which is interesting. Um, 
More Palkia action here with the Kyogre. The Kyogre is interesting for sure. I'm not sure what matchup it's like specifically for, but the Kyogre that snipes for 180 is very interesting. Um, very interesting. Yeah, more Palkia here. Again, Palkia just seems like a really good partner. Now, this one's interesting. This one got uh, top 16. We see a few attackers. We see a 1-1 Glaceon V-Star, and we see a Wishy-Washy. So Glaceon V-Star has the attack that prevents your opponent from retreating. Not honest, honestly, that's not even bad. Being able to prevent retreating is actually not terrible because, again, not many decks are playing Switch right now, or if they are, they're playing like one or two. And it's also got that V Star power, which can be pretty annoying to deal with, too. This one also playing the Vulpix and a Wishy Washy that does 30 plus 30 more damage for each, like energy, basic energy on it. But then, of course, you can combine that uh, with its ability where it gets like plus 150 HP or something. So it goes like 180 HP. So nice little strong one prize attacker. It's a pretty funny little. Uh, attacker. You can also use it with the new, uh, that new tool card, which is interesting, so that's cool, but, uh, interesting build. I'm not sure if the Glaceon is great over, like, Palkia. Like, I feel like Palkia would be better than Glaceon, but it's still not a bad attacker. Like, it's not the worst attacker you could play in the deck. You know, see more Palkia here. This one got top four. We do see another Palkia getting top four. This one does play two of the Wishy Washy, so once again, I'm trying to make use of that Wishy Washy. Again, doing 30 plus 30 more damage for each water energy on Wishy Washy. And if you do have three or more water energy on that Wishy Washy, it goes to 180 HP. So that's a pretty interesting attacker for sure. Um, this one not playing Palkia, just optimizing just straightforward Shine Pow with Bibarel and Greninja. Um, that's it. Not, not like playing Mew or anything, just literally Shine Pow, Greninja, uh, Bibarel, and like Manaphy and stuff. So that's interesting. Um, more Palkia. This one does play the Snorlax. Now, Snorlax does work with Baxcalibur. Baxcalibur isn't, isn't restricted to water Pokemon, right? Um, no, it's not yet. It's, it's not to just water. You can use Baxcalibur with non-water type Pokemon. So you can use Baxcalibur with Snorlax, and that's not bad. The only problem with Snorlax is you have to play, like, Switch with it or Wind-Up Arm because you're, you don't want to stay asleep, especially in matchups where, like, staying asleep can cost you, like, the game. Uh, very good card. It might help against Lost Box. Actually, I don't hate that. Snorlax in... Uh, Max Caliber honestly isn't a bad idea. I kind of like that actually. Um, pretty pretty good tech card. And then another build here using Vulpix, Palkia, and Wishy Washy. So trying to really squeeze everything together. This one got top 16. The Snorlax build actually got top four, which is cool. Proving that Snorlax is a really good attacker in the deck. Uh, another Vulpix build. Not playing Palkia, just playing that 1 1 Vulpix. And this build here got top eight. Got more Vulpix action. I guess the same thing with Vulpix too. Um, Vulpix actually stops Shine Power from attacking, so that's kind of neat. Yeah, I guess Vulpix really walls off a lot of attackers. It would technically wall off Shine Pow and Palkia and Luminion and Baxcalibur. Huh. I didn't think of that. That's actually kind of gross. Yeah, Vulpix is actually a really strong attacker. The more I think about it, I'm like, more I'm like, yeah, you know, well, there's a lot of Pokemon abilities in the format. Yeah, okay, but Vulpix actually is good in the mirror, too. I didn't even realize that. That's honestly kind of insane. All right, all right. Now I'm, I'm really getting bought on the Vulpix. This one was a runner-up. Um... Got more Palkia here. This one got top eight out of 90 people. That's pretty good. Um, the Palkia build's interesting. Um, but yeah, I guess it just loses the Vulpix. No, but no, the Palkia, they can use the Palkia V against you that does 200 damage. They can't one-shot you, I guess. Huh. I feel like Palkia V is still really strong. I don't know. That's interesting. Hmm. Hmm, I don't know. Vulpix might be actually kind of insane. All right, this one here, we got a Starmie V, another really strong water Pokemon, doing 50 damage for each energy on your opponent's Pokemon. Starmie V is a pretty good attacker with Shine Pow 2, I guess. Another strong water type. Like I said, we've seen a lot of good water tech cards that this deck could theoretically play. Uh, we got more Palkia Vulpix action. Uh, this one does have Suicune in the deck and a Wishy Washy and Vulpix, so a bit of a teched out toolbox of a deck. Uh, Suicune is another nice strong attacker. It's a nice base Pokemon that has Fleet Footed. And Fleet Footed can be pretty good sometimes. Drawing a card is pretty useful, um, especially when trying to maybe just find a supporter. Because this deck only plays four Irida, two Iono, and two Boss. Got top 16. Interesting. I guess I guess you can't see that. My bad. Um, another Palkia build. Again, more Palkia. Got more Palkia here. Yeah, Palkia Iono just seems kind of insane the more I think about it. And that's the thing, like, if you're playing against the Vulpix, you can use the Palkia V, but I guess if you're only playing one Palkia, it's not as good, because these, these, I, these Fax Calibulus are not going to be playing any copies of uh, Miriam or Clara. But they have Super Rod, though. So, yeah, I feel like, Vul I don't know, Vulpix is good in the mirror. Depends if you're playing against Palkia or not. Interesting. Uh, we got more straight, this one here is very straightforward. Four Shine Pow and the Kyogre. And the Kyogre is decent, too, against, um... Against Vulpix, too, I guess. This one got top four. Uh, Luminion's pretty good, too, because you're able to... Yeah, I like that. The double Luminion is really good, because you're able to kind of attack with it and use its ability to get all these supporters. And this deck plays a lot of them. 
Um, see this build here getting top 16 again, just a straightforward build. Um, we got another uh, Palkia build here. This one, very heavy, very, very heavy Palkia. I got 3-3 three, three Palkia. Um, this actually fits a lot in the deck. Only two Shine Pals. We're playing 2-2 two, two Beaverl and 3-3 three, three Palkia. So getting pretty greedy with the counts. Um, this one, again, going back to the Articuno. Again, I really like the idea of Articuno in um, Bax Calibre. I think it's a really smart idea. If decks are not going to be using that many Switch, Articuno just seems like a very good attacker to use in the deck. Because um, it could be good, like, against Lugia. Lugia might not be playing many Switch, right? Or even playing Switch at all. Like, Lugia right now doesn't play Switch at the current time in the meta. It's like, if they're, who's to say they're going to play Switch going forward in the next set, right? So it's like, I don't know, man. Articuno just seems like a no-brainer to play in the deck, in my opinion. It's very, very easy to use, too. It's only two energy to attack. Very, very cost-efficient. Um, more Palkia action. This one is straightforward. We got Jet Energy in the deck. Um, got the, the Palkia builds. Yeah, Palkia just dominating, obviously. It's just such a such a good card to pair with uh, with Shine Pow here. This one using Palkia and the two of Wishy Washy. 11 energy. Yeah, Skater Park. Yeah, yeah everything kind of checks out. Another uh, Mew build. This one actually plays a Spirit Tomb. I kind of like that. It's one thing we've seen with these, these Shine Pow lists. They haven't had, they didn't really play that many ways to deal with like Mew, I guess. None of these lists play Drapion. Drapion is actually kind of cool with uh, Bax Calibre because Mew can like, you know, path you, but Drapion does work with Bax Calibre. Bax Calibre can start to Drapion. Drapion doesn't need dark energy to attack. You just put four energy on it. Boom. I, I kind of feel like Drapion should be played in these Shine Pow decks. You can also use Drapion against Gardevoir, right? I feel like that's the one thing I've noticed. None of these lists play Drapion. I, it, I don't know. I feel like Drapion is like you, you should play it. I know like Shine Pow kind of already blows you up, but I still feel like Drapion is just something that these decks should play regardless. I, just, I don't know. It just feels weird that I haven't, we haven't seen a Drapion yet. I feel like it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, more Vulpix here. We got the Palkia. Again, more Palkia. More Palkia. This one here, we got the Empoleon for the Lost Box. The other thing, too, is how is, uh, how is Shine Pow going to be Lost Box? And that's the big answer that a lot of people need to know. I guess that's where the Vulpix can help. Because, like, Vulpix, you know, you can't cram. You can't use Raikou. But, like, they can use, like, Dragonite V. I don't know. I guess it's the thing that, like, Gen Shine Pal's going to have to figure out is how does it be Lost Box? Would the Empoleon build be the best way to be Lost Box? Because if you're playing against, like, Giratina or Gudra, it's like, oh, I can still attack your Empoleon. But it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to, you know, have Shine Pal to blow you up. So I feel like Empoleon might, I don't know, that might that might go better over on our side where Lost Box is super popular. Because that's the thing, like, can Shine Pal, Baxcalibur beat Lost Box? I know you have, like, the Radiant Greninja, but they can just slam a Mana Fee down. That makes it really awkward. You have Luminion, which is cute, too, I guess. Um... Yeah, that makes me curious to see if the the kite, the Empoleon will be good. Oh, well, that's cool. They got a reversal energy in this deck. Well, is reversal energy does that work with Chine Pow? It does work with Kyogre. I know that. It would work with Kyogre. Oh no, I can't work. Yeah, I can't work with Chine Pow. What am I saying? Uh, Vulpix. Yeah, yeah, because reversal is only on non-rule box Pokemon. Um, yeah, a lot of Palkia, more more Kyogre. So kind of like the main takeaway we've seen is that. These Shine Pal is like Palkia and Kyogre and Vulpix. Those are like the three pop most popular cards we've seen. This build here does play the Empoleon. This one got the Spirit Tomb. The Empoleon's really good. I guess that's how you can just be Gardevoir, though. Or Mew, sorry, is just play the Spirit Tomb over the Drapion. I don't know. I still kind of like the idea of Drapion, though. Anyways, but yeah, this build here has the one of Empoleon, which again, Empoleon is pretty good as you're able to stop Lost Box. So I I, I don't know. I kind of like that. What if we played two Empoleon in our Shine Pow decks to try to beat Lost Box? Because can the deck beat Lost Box? I, I don't know if it can. That's my thing. Because, like, I get, like, the Palkia build's cool, but then there's, you know, Raikou Sky Steel Stone, your Palkia, and it's, like, you got your beefy Palkia that gets slain by Raikou, and then you got Vulpix. Vulpix is cool, but they can Sableye you twice and knock you out. These lists aren't playing Lost City. That's the thing. I think that's the thing Shine Pal's got to know. Like, I, none of these lists from Japan look like they have a good time against Lost Box. I feel like Lost Box just eats them alive. I guess there's Iono, but if, I, I guess Iono's, like, maybe the best way to beat them. Maybe that's how you beat Lost Box. You just Iono them to, like, two cards in the end of the game. I guess that's fair enough. I guess that's, like, the, the, you could literally play Iono as a way to beat Lost Box and as a draw supporter. I guess maybe that's how they do it. And I'm still scratching my head at that. I don't know if that's enough, though. I don't know if Iono's gonna be enough to beat Lost Box. Well, these lists only play, like, one or two Iono anyways. This one plays three. Cheryl's kind of cute, too. Cheryl Palkio is actually really smart with Bax Calibur and with the, uh, Superior Energy Retrieval. I like that. That's pretty smart. Going back to the Starmie here again. Um, yeah, more, more Starmie action. Some of these lists are playing that Squawkabilly, which I guess also works with Iono. It doesn't really do, or with uh, Bax Calibre, sorry. It does have a pretty interesting 
attack, I think, too. It's not very strong, but it has like an attack that slows energy, I think. All right, here we go. The first sighting of a Drapion. This one was a runner up. Yes, yeah, see, I told you Drapion's good. See, we finally see a Drapion in one of these Shine Pow Bax Caliber lists. Again, it just feels like a decent card to play. It's a really strong attacker against Mew. You can build it up with Bax Caliber, and you can also use it against Gardevoir. I like it. I, I think Drapion's kind of a smart card to play in this deck. Um, yeah, I think it's really smart. More Vulpix. Like, I guess you have Vulpix for Gardevoir, but, like, again, if Gardevoir's gonna play Drifloon, you're just not, like, Vulpix is gonna get KO'd by Drifloon. I guess you have to play the Spirit Mask, but, like, will people really play Spirit Mask? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like Vulpix isn't gonna be enough. Like, Gardevoir's just gonna go Drifloon on you. Drifloon does, like, 300 damage with a Champions Festival, so it's like, I don't know, man. Drifloon with that new tool in Champions Festival basically means it'll just one-shot your uh, Vulpix anyways. So I feel like Vulpix won't be enough to beat Guardian. I feel like that Drapion might have to be good um, in the deck. Yeah, just more Palkia stuff. Yeah, Palkia. This one going between Empoleon. I like that. Yeah, maybe the Empoleon's the way to go about it. I would probably prefer, like, a Water Toolbox. This build plays two Suicune. I don't know why there's literally two <laughs> Suicune. I don't know why it looks like that, but there we go. <laughs> two Suicunes. Um, yeah, another Drapion in the list. Again, Drapion just seems like a really smart card to play. Ooh, Kiram VMAX. I like that. And, and it has Drapion. Yeah, it's got Drapion in Kiram. It's got that Drapion I was talking about. Yeah, Kiram's kind of cute. You can use Kiram with Baxcalibur. Kiram does do a ton of damage with Baxcalibur. It's like, it's like a stronger Shine Pow, basically. It's a stronger Shine Pow, but it gives up three prizes. But 1-1 one -one Kiram doesn't seem like a bad idea in this deck either. It's a really strong attacker. Um, I guess you have Glaciated World for those weird instances where you might use it. I mean, I'm probably not going to use Glaciated World, but Kiram's pretty smart. It's kind of just scanning through these. There's a lot of them are just kind of the same list, just the Palkia heavy builds using the Tomb. I guess, like, the Tomb's good enough against Mew, but I don't know, man. I still kind of dig the Drapion. Yeah, we got the Empoleon again here, which is smart. And I guess one... Oh, maybe... Oh, you know what? Maybe that's how you beat Lost Box, too. You have Iono plus Canceling Clone. If you play Canceling Clone in your Chime Palace, you can go Boss Manaphy cologne and then greninja so maybe that's like another way that like this deck can be lost box is greninja plus cologne because all the lists are going to be playing greninja anyways and that's the end of the shine pow list but there you go that is it for some shine pow deck lists um here from japan it is looking like it's going to be a great deck and again with all the water pokemon we have to choose from the articuno the empoleon the palkia the vulpix the uh, crown zenith kyogre who knows we might be looking at the uh, a new archetype becoming a top tier deck and uh, with cards like Irida being really good, the new, you know, Superior Edge Retrieval being good, um, having all the water Pokemon, uh, like, to choose from is kind of insane. It makes uh, Shine Pal look that it's going to be a pretty strong archetype going forward. And being a two-prizer that is a basic and that can one-shot everything is also pretty threatening, too. So definitely curious to see where Shine Pal goes. Let me know what you think of these lists down below. What would you put in your Shine Pal list if you were to build a Shine Pal list? Because, again, I think we still have to figure out how we're going to be last box. But that'll be for me on today's video here on the second channel. I'll leave a link down below to the website if you want to go look at all these Shine Pow EX decks yourself to get a kind of gander at them and all that good stuff. And that'll be for me. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye-bye.